100 crazy music facts everyone should know. Metallica are the only band to have ever played in all seven continents. In Antarctica, they performed for 120 scientists in a see-through dome. Eminem's hit song, Rap God, holds the world record for the highest number of words contained in one song. It has an astounding 1,560 words at an average of 4.28 words per second. Prince wrote his first album, For You, when he was just 20 years old. On it, he played a total of 27 musical instruments. They included hand claps, finger snaps, and a polymoog. David Bowie's distinctive eyes, with one pupil permanently enlarged, came from a childhood fight. He tricked a friend into abandoning a date, letting Bowie sweep in instead, and the friend later punched him into the emergency room. Marvin Gaye got a 15-year-old pregnant. No, this wasn't some young fan of his. This was his wife's niece. When Mariah Carey gave birth to twins, she had the hospital play a recording of her performing Fantasy. She also insisted that it had to be the live version so that she'd hear a crowd cheering for her. In 1997, The Flaming Lips recorded a four-disc album. The album's eight tracks weren't divided among the discs like normal with two tracks on each. Instead, each song's audio channels were divided among the discs, so you had to play all four discs simultaneously on four separate CD players to hear the music. Slash from Guns N' Roses says he wasn't trying to create a wacky persona when he donned his famous hat and hair. He chose those to hide his face out of embarrassment due to stage fright. Everyone eventually learned Michael Jackson had a skin condition, but the first clue came before his face changed. That trademark glove of his wasn't just an affectation. He wore it to cover the vitiligo patches on his hand. The greatest honor Whitney Houston ever received was when Saddam Hussein chose I Will Always Love You as his campaign song. The unauthorized Houston endorsement must have been truly effective, as a reported 100% of the population voted that year, all for Saddam. Chuck Berry's duck walk started because he realized one day that his pants were all crumpled, so he bent over to block the wrinkles with his guitar, thus starting the iconic duck walk. Elvis Presley never wrote a single song. All of his songs were written by other songwriters for him to perform. Of the over 600 he recorded, not one of them was written by him. Lead singer Axl Rose wrote the lyrics to Sweet Child O' Mine while hearing the guitar ringing from another room. As a result, it spent 24 weeks in the charts at number one, which is absolutely mind-blowing when you realize it was written in five minutes. Scream is Michael Jackson's first single from the History album, notable for its record-breaking cost of $10.7 million for its spaceship set. It is the most expensive music video ever produced, which ultimately won it a Grammy for Best Short Form Music Video. The Beatles got rejected in an audition for a record company. Despite performing 15 songs in an hour during an audition for Decca Records, the label believed guitar groups were on the decline and couldn't foresee their future success in show business. The song Macarena is about a woman trying to cheat while her boyfriend is being drafted into the military. Nirvana were kicked out of their own launch party for the album Nevermind for starting a spontaneous food fight. The international animal rights organization, PETA, once asked the pet shop boys to change their name to the Rescue Shelter Boys. The duo refused with a British politeness typical of such an absurd request. New Order's classic Blue Monday is the best-selling 12-inch single in history. How unfortunate that for every copy sold, the band lost money because the cost of producing its unique disc cover was higher than the cost of the sale. And while we're talking about New Order, the band The Killers took their name from the logo on a bass drum in the video for the New Order song, Crystal. Everyone knows that Michael Jackson's Thriller is the best-selling album of all time, but do you know the best-selling album of all time by a female singer? Well, that answer might come as a surprise. It's Shania Twain's album, Come On Over, from 1997. Axl Rose once received $8 an hour to smoke cigarettes as part of an experiment at UCLA. The reason why Nirvana's Smells Like Teen Spirit music video features a server with a mop and a bucket is that Kurt Cobain had to work as a server at the school where he studied, a period that scarred him badly and shaped his rebellious personality. Before becoming famous, Elvis Presley was a truck driver, sting an English teacher, Madonna, a waitress at Dunkin' Donuts, and Johnny Cash deciphered encrypted codes in the military. The name of the only member who does not show off his beard in the band ZZ Top is Frank Beard. Before the Fantastic Four from Liverpool called themselves the Beatles, they were called Johnny and the Moondogs. 
Ever wondered who Annie is from Michael Jackson's hit, Smooth Criminal? Well, if you've ever practiced first aid, Annie Doll is the name of the doll you give first aid to, and the first thing you do is to ask the patient, are you okay? Hence the line, Annie, are you okay? The heavy rock band, Rock Bitch, which was composed mainly of women, used to perform in full nudity, perform explicit sexual acts on stage, and at the height of the evening, threw condoms to the audience and selected spectators to join them backstage giving an extra meaning to sex, drugs, and rock and roll. Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart had an unusual companion in his creative endeavors, a pet starling bird. He became so attached to the bird that he mourned its death by holding a small funeral and even composed a piece of music imitating its playful songs. The one-hit wonder band from the 90s, Chumba Wumba, who sang Tub Thumping hold the record for the album with the longest name in history. The full title contains 156 words, but it was reduced down to, the boy bands have one for commercial use. Farouk Bulsara, who would later become known as Freddie Mercury, was born on the island of Zanzibar to Parsi parents. Bob Dylan's birth name was Robert Allen Zimmerman. Over the years, he had many aliases from Lucky Wilbury to Elston Gunn, but he legally changed it to Bob Dylan in 1962. The inspiration for the last part coming from the poet Dylan Thomas. Bob Marley, the iconic reggae artist and symbol of Jamaican culture, had a surprising familial connection to British colonial history. His father was a white British naval captain. John Lennon's middle name was Winston, after former British Prime Minister Winston Churchill. Louis Armstrong landed himself in legal trouble in 1930 when he was arrested for smoking marijuana and spent nine days in jail. Ludwig van Beethoven had an unconventional ritual before composing music. He would immerse his head in cold water. Beethoven believed this practice stimulated his brain and enhanced his creative abilities. Tupac Shakur had family ties to the struggle for black liberation in America. His godmother, Asata Shakur, was a former member of the Black Liberation Army. Madonna's first band was called Breakfast Club, in which she played drums and guitar. Paul McCartney and John Lennon wrote She Loves You in a hotel room while shaving. Before becoming famous, Jimi Hendrix played backup guitar for artists such as Little Richard, Ike and Tina Turner, and the Isley Brothers. The iconic piano riff in Derek and the Domino's song, Layla, was not played by Eric Clapton, but by Dwayne Allman, who was originally brought in as a session guitarist. Before becoming the frontman of Nirvana and the grunge movement in the 90s, Kurt Cobain's first band was called Fecal Matter. Janis Joplin's free-spirited nature extended even to her final wishes. In her will, she left 2,500 dollars to her friends with a specific instruction to throw a party in her honor upon her passing. Led Zeppelin's song Stairway to Heaven is often considered one of the greatest rock songs of all time, yet the band was sued for copyright infringement over its guitar riff. The case was settled out of court. When Bob Marley died, he was buried with his red Gibson guitar, a Bible open to Psalm 23, and a bud of marijuana. Jack and Meg White from the White Stripes initially portrayed themselves as being brother and sister. However, records later emerged showing that they were not related. In fact, they were married but got divorced before the band gained fame. John Bonham, Led Zeppelin's drummer, learned to play the drums with his bare hands while he was a member of the Blue Star Trio. He replaced Bill Harvey, who taught him how to do it without injuring his fists. Elvis Presley's manager, Colonel Tom Parker, was not actually a colonel. He was given the honorary title by the governor of Louisiana, Jimmy Davis, for help on his election campaign. Aretha Franklin taught herself to play the piano by ear. Her mother was a pianist, and renowned pianists like Art Tatum and Reverend James Cleveland visited her home when she was a child, providing her with a strong, informal ear education. Fleetwood Mac's album Rumors was recorded while the band members were going through various relationship breakups. Jim Morrison of The Doors was once arrested and put on trial for exposing himself during a concert to 10,000 people at the Dinner Key Auditorium in Miami, Florida. Although many say it never happened, Morrison was convicted and charged for indecent exposure, but sadly died in Paris two years later, at 27, while appealing the verdict. Chuck Berry's Johnny B. Good was included on the Voyager Golden Record, sent into space in 1977 as a representation of Earth's culture. Bjork was offered a full scholarship to study piano at the Conservatory of Music in Reykjavik when she was just six years old. Billy Joel's song, We Didn't Start the Fire, mentions over 100 historical events. Its fast-paced lyrics include brief references to 119 significant political, cultural, scientific, and sporting events between 1948, the year before Joel's birth, and 1989, in chronological order.
The Red Hot Chili Peppers' original name was Tony Flo and the miraculously majestic Masters of Mayhem. The Ramones all adopted the last name Ramon, even though they were not related. They got the idea from a story they heard about Paul McCartney. It said that when the Beatles were touring Scotland, McCartney didn't want to feel left out for not being Scottish, so he briefly adopted the alias Paul Ramon to blend in. Bruno Mars's birth name is Peter Jean Hernandez, and he chose Mars as his last name because girls used to say he was out of this world, although I think Bruno Uranus has a better ring to it. Pink Floyd's Dark Side of the Moon spent a record-breaking 937 weeks, over 17 years, on the Billboard 200 chart. Jimi Hendrix wrote the song The Wind Cries Mary in London in 1967 for his then-live-in girlfriend, Kathy Mary Etchingham, as an apology for berating her over her lumpy mashed potatoes. Tony Iommi of Black Sabbath once believed his LA house was haunted due to strange noises in the walls. Despite calling the police multiple times, nothing was found until he set up booby traps and discovered someone had been living in the crawl space after finding a mattress and coffee can full of cigarette butts. Since then, he keeps Rottweilers at home for security. Lemmy from Motorhead was once a roadie for Jimi Hendrix. Gwen Stefani's brother was in no doubt, but quit before they got famous so he could work as an animator on The Simpsons. The Grateful Dead sponsored the 1992 Lithuanian Olympic basketball team after the breakup of the Soviet Union. They would go on to win the bronze medal against Russia. The band sent tie-dyed t-shirts in Lithuania's national colors with a design of a skeleton dunking a basketball, which the team wore during the competition. Toto, the band who gave us the song Africa, was the studio band for Michael Jackson's Thriller album. The song Red Red Wine, made famous by the pop reggae band UB40 in the 1980s, was originally written and performed by Neil Diamond in 1967. He also wrote I'm a Believer, which was made famous by the Monkees. Kerry King from the thrash metal band Slayer played guitar on the Beastie Boys album License to Ill. In June of 1986, there was a week when the Top 40 not only contained a song by Genesis, but also individual songs from members. Phil Collins, Peter Gabriel, Mike Rutherford, and Steve Hackett. Rutherford was fronting Mike and the mechanics on the side at the time. Ever heard of Warren Cucurullo? Well, he was once a guitarist for Frank Zappa, Missing Persons, and Duran Duran. He helped to give Duran Duran two of their biggest hits, Ordinary World and Come Undone. In 2001, he was fired from Duran Duran and went on to do gay porn. He even made and sold a self-modeled dildo he called the Rock Rod. A crazed fan once infiltrated the crawl space of Prince's hotel room, reciting Bible verses in an attempt to bring him back to his faith after the musician converted to Jehovah's Witness. He should have just knocked on the door. All four members of the Beatles were still in their 20s when the band broke up. Creedence Clearwater Revival were only together for four years before they broke up. In that time, they released seven albums, with six of them being released in the first two years. Even though they had nine singles reach the top ten, the band never had a number one hit, but they do hold the record for the most number two hits. John Fogarty was once sued for sounding too much like Creedence Clearwater Revival, a.k.a. John Fogarty, the only man in history sued for plagiarizing himself. Ain't that a kick in the head? Ella Fitzgerald had such good pitch the band too to her. She also entered an amateur night at the Apollo Theater with a dancing routine when she was young, but decided to sing instead and won. Not only is Paul McCartney credited with playing the celery on the Beach Boys song Vegetables, but you can also hear him chewing on a carrot in Super Furry Animals song Receptacle for the Respectable. Just listen for the crunch. Joan Bon Jovi's first recorded singing was on Christmas in the Stars, the Star Wars Christmas album. Singing R2-D2 We Wish You a Merry Christmas, he is credited as his given name. John Bon Jovi. During James Brown's live performances, if you ever heard him saying, I gotcha, it indicated catching a band member's mistake, resulting in a $50 fine. Three instances of this led to being left behind on tour, regardless of the location. Additionally, one of Brown's dance moves, where he would put up his fingers rapidly one at a time, signaled the amount of deductions from the musician's pay. The Smashing Pumpkins frontman Billy Corgan is an avid collector of vintage guitars, with a collection that includes over 300 instruments. Bob Dylan thought the Beatles were singing I Get High instead of I Can't Hide and I Want to Hold Your Hand, so he brought a bunch of weed when he met them. It was the first time the Beatles smoked marijuana. Bob lit one, handed it to Ringo, and Ringo proceeded to smoke the whole thing because that's what he thought he was supposed to do. Dolly Parton once entered a Dolly Parton look-alike contest and lost. 
The rock band KISS trademarked their iconic face paint designs. The members of The Clash met in 1976 at a Sex Pistols gig. Mama Cass from Mamas and Papas and Keith Moon from The Who died in the same bedroom. That room was owned by singer-songwriter Harry Nilsson. Pete Townsend, also from The Who, bought the flat from Nilsson. Even though Nilsson thought the flat was cursed after what happened to Mama Cass, Townsend was later quoted saying, Lightning wouldn't strike the same place twice, and within a month, Moon was dead. They both died at the young age of 32. In 1947, Billie Holiday was convicted of drug possession, resulting in the loss of her cabaret card and a temporary ban from performing in New York City clubs. She died in 1959 while under arrest for possession, succumbing to liver and heart failure while handcuffed to her hospital bed. During the Cold War, Johnny Cash, serving as an Air Force radio operator in Landsberg, Germany, intercepted Soviet communications and became the first American to learn of Joseph Stalin's death. In 1965, the Beatles were banned from performing a gig in Israel by the government because the band provoked aggression and sexual stimuli and had no artistic merit. Joni Mitchell wrote the song Woodstock, even though she never attended the music festival. She wrote most of the song on the last night of the festival, out of frustration of not being allowed to go. Stevie Wonder was only 11 years old when Motown signed him to a contract in 1961. Famed jazz musician Miles Davis often wore a protective cup to shield his private parts from rowdy audience members who threw bottles at his performances. For his 34th birthday, Billy Idol took over the penthouse of the Oriental Hotel in Bangkok. After three weeks of partying and $250,000 damage, he was asked to leave. When he didn't, the military was called in. They shot him with a tranquilizer dart and hauled him out on a stretcher. When they were touring the world back in the 1980s, Duran Duran used to have the local age of consent printed on their daily itineraries so as to avoid any misunderstandings. In 1996, Ringo Starr went to Japan to take part in an ad for a brand of applesauce. Why? Because Ringo means apple in Japanese. When Paul McCartney went to Japan, he was arrested and put in jail for 10 days. But he was trying to bring half a pound of marijuana into the country. What does help mean in Japanese? In 2004, Johnny Cash's family were approached by an ad agency to ask permission to use his song Ring of Fire in a commercial for a hemorrhoid cream. They politely declined. British musician Spencer Davis played the lottery every week with three sets of numbers, one for him, one for his wife, and one for his dog. In 2012, the dog hit a jackpot of $250,000. Leo Fender, the creator of such iconic guitars as the Fender Telecaster, Stratocaster, and precision bass did not know how to play guitar. Harrison Ford was once a roadie for The Doors. Harrison joined The Doors on tour to help film some of their live performances for a film about the band. Queen's lead singer Freddie Mercury once dressed Princess Diana in drag and took her to an iconic London gay bar in the 80s. She wore a leather cap to hide her hair, an army jacket, and dark aviator sunglasses. The Who's drummer Keith Moon once took a shot of brandy mixed with horse tranquilizer before a show. Then while playing Won't Get Fooled Again, Again, drummed slower and slower until he passed out. Keith was thrown in the shower backstage to sober up, and the band asked a member of the audience to accompany them on the drums for three more songs. On a drug and alcohol-fueled tour in 1984, Ozzy Osbourne used a straw to snort a spider off the ground in an effort to gross out his tour mates, Motley Crue. John Bonham, the drummer for Led Zeppelin, died after drinking 40 shots of vodka in a single day. He started the day with four quadruple vodkas for breakfast. 